What is up guys and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be reacting to the US test, the new Super A10 Warthog after getting an upgrade, bro. Like the, the A10 Warthog, bro, I absolutely love those things, like honestly. And now it's getting an upgrade, that is just <clears throat> out of the world, you know. So let's see what we got here. Go hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, all those good stuff. And let's get on with the video. <clears throat> There she goes. Razor sharp fangs and an Avenger Gatling gun. The Super A10 Thunderbolt 2 Warthog is the mm. United States' most successful close air support fighter. And now it is back, better, and stronger than ever before. But it seems the first fighter it would be going up against isn't of Chinese or Russian origin, but rather a fellow American that's been trying to steal its job specifically the F-35 Lightning II. Mm. And so in this video, we take a detailed look at why and how two fighters that should be on the same team are looking to rip each other apart. Yes, the A-10 Thunder versus the F-35 Lightning. And it all began in 2014 when a Congress full of retired personnel that had either piloted the A-10 Warthog or been saved by it was told by the Air Force. I like how they do the design on the <clears throat> on the front of this uh, A10 Warhawk Pro. Sorry, my voice is a bit. <clears throat> that their much beloved fighter was now unsurvivable in today's battlefields. Nice, crazy. So should be retired to free up manpower and 4.2 billion dollars in funding to the F35 Lightning II, which would replace it. Congress's loyalty to the Warthog kicked into full gear, and they demanded that the Air Force proves that the F-35 could indeed effectively replace the Warthog, which would have been easy to do, except for the fact that Congress also tasked the Air Force with upgrading the Warthog to the best it could be in order to give it a fair fighting chance. And the Air Force did just that, feeding the Warthog with upgrades so many that they had to be added in different suites at different times, starting with Suite 8. Suite 8 came with V-12 lightweight airborne recovery systems, that allowed A-10 pilots to communicate more effectively with personnel on the ground, such as para-rescue men and pilots whose planes had been shot down. With such a system integrated into the central interface control unit of the Warthog, the jet could now perform even closer close air support Ooh. and provide more active assistance in combat search and rescue CSAR, missions. And for better survivability in today's battlefields, the Warthog was treated to the installation of longer-ranging standoff weapons that cancelled out the need for A-10s to fly into face of danger before taking a shot. A need that could be fatal for the Warthog, as it doesn't have the super maneuverability to escape enemy fire when spotted in unfriendly airspace. So it's new weapons... These things, bro, literally insane. ...weapons would play a role in proving super maneuverability as an unnecessary luxury, in addition to updated tactics. Some of these tactics include the use of the Warthog's modern night vision goggles to keep dominating the battlefield during the night and at medium or low altitudes, and engaging maritime targets with AGR-20 advanced precision kill weapon systems, rockets that load four times faster than their predecessor, a bang of a finishing touch from Suite 8. Suite 9 then came, bearing more gifts for the Warthog starting with the integration of a situational awareness pad into its operational flight program. This enables Joint Terminal Attack Controllers, JTACs, to report their positions digitally, which is a significant leap from requiring pilots to search for them on the ground, where they could easily be camouflaged by dust. And in more specific response to camouflaging or targeting errors, the Warthog is now able to validate targets to prevent accidentally aiming at friendlies with inertially aided munitions in the heat of oh, the world, wow. which is really every moment on a battlefield. And on the battlefield, the Warthog can now engage multiple targets, up to six at a time, with precision guided munitions simultaneously and with the push of a single button. These precision guided That's munitions crazy, are man. too, from 500 pound class GBU 38 explosives to 2000 pound class Just GBU look how big that is. <clears throat> that would be set for an explosive mm -hmm. journey thanks to pinpoint accuracy capabilities 
that have been further enhanced by the new high-tech helmets known as hybrid optical-based inertial trackers, or Hobbit for short. These helmets come with a mounted sight that more accurately responds to pilot-headed movements. Okay. A give the pilot less work to do feature that combines with other new upgrades About to technology, the you know. ability to operate from austere environments with little to no support. But apparently, all upgrades sound fancy when narrated, and it was time for some real action. Some type of competition that sees the A-10 and F-35 battle it out jet to jet to determine which deserves to be the Air Force's go-to for close air support missions. And so Congress demanded a fly-off, which is a face-off, but, you know, for things that fly. And while fly-offs are usually debate settlers, this one was far from it, as there were talks of the Air Force setting it up in ways that favored the F-35 over the A-10. And it also didn't help that the fly-off was... I think the design of the F-35 is, is a bit nicer than the A-10 Warhawk, but... Bro, the A-10 Warhawk, I absolutely love that thing. ...actually shrouded in as much secrecy as Mr. Krabs secret recipe. Eventually, the fly-off ended up not having much weight and leaving everyone to inquire <laughs> on specs again. Which is fine because specs don't lie. And one known spec of the F-35 is that thanks to its super sleek lines that help cut through the air easily and its high-tech gadgetry, the fighter would simply have a hard time trying to fly or loiter as low and slow as the A-10 does in close air support missions. In fact, the A-10 loiters so long and flies so low, sometimes that it is equipped with a titanium bathtub belly to absorb the inevitable ground fire it will receive from oh, troops wow. on the ground that are so close to the jet, they could be pictured wearing it as a hat. Yeah. However, despite the Warthog's domination in this department, the Air Force is more interested in matching the F-35 up to speed than prioritizing the Warthog. In the Air Force's defense, though, significant investments to the tune of $400 billion went into the development of the F-35, <laughs> what? making it the Pentagon's most expensive weapons program to date. No. So it does make sense that the Air Force wants to utilize it to the max, to be their everything, from their top-of-the-line fighter to the butler that answers the door. And while this argument was gaining weight in favor of the F-35, the A-10's biggest upgrade yet, Suite 10, would arrive, and it was just what the doctor ordered. Let's see this. Let's see Suite it. Suite 10 upgrades installed. The new Super A-10 was unveiled with the full integration of AGR-20 APKWS weapons. Okay. The 31 JDAM guidance kits that convert unguided bombs into all-weather precision-guided munitions and small diameter bombs that have advanced multi-target engagement capability that would see the Warthog, theoretically, able to target 18 units of three different types of weapons at wow. once, and with much higher accuracy too. Thanks to the JDAM guidance and a new synthetic aperture radar pod that would get the Warthog aiming like a sniper as it glides through the air on new wings provided by mm. Boeing, after being funded <laughs> with a stunning $1.1 billion dollars deliver 173 sets of you know what i find weird like how do these guys drive this thing and also aim their targets at the same time that is my question bro that is just thinking about it it's so hard to imagine doing like both things at the same time you know of new wings wings that would last for up to 10,000 flight hours without requiring a depot inspection then a further project, known as the A-10 Thunderbolt Advanced Wing Continuation Kit, or ATTACK for short, was launched to provide an additional 112 sets of wings. And next on the unending list of upgrades for the Warthog is a data link that allows threat information to be shared between A-10s, resulting in increased spatial, battlefield, and situational awareness, which are all important ingredients for survivability and so addresses the survivability fears of the Air Force regarding the Warthog, at least significantly. This should then likely cement the Warthog's position on the front lines as a close air support aircraft, whether alone or side by side with its fellow compatriot, the F-35. So with Thunder and Lightning back on the same team, the Air Force is keen to fit the Warthog with as much fifth generation tech as possible, seeing as the F-35 is, after all, a fifth generation fighter. And so tests have been ceaseless at the Eglin Air Force Base in Florida for an array of upgrades that would have been known as Suite 11. 
Suite 11 would focus on using agile development methodologies to not only bring these upgrades to life, but also allow for a more rapid update cycle for relevant enhancements, particularly those that relate to digitization, such as the addition of jam-resistant GPS, a three-dimensional surround sound system, the ARC210 radio, and the new 11.6-inch 1920x1080 pixel multifunction color okay. display high-resolution display system, or HDRS, that would fix the Warthog's cockpit that's full of avionics that look like they run on steam. With the HDRS, the Warthog would be getting a digital primary flight display that pampers pilots with cinema-level quality of targeting pod footage and an advanced map engine that enhances targeting wow, look at that. the battlefield. Look at that, man. This upgrade would be the cockpit's most significant modernization since the A-10A to A-10C conversion back in 2005. And the Warthog has been serving even long before then. Introduced in the 1970s to disintegrate Russian tanks on the ground, the Warthog would add the bonus of fury in Iraq to become the most efficient close air support fighter from the U.S., an efficiency that remains to this day, after almost 50 years since it was introduced. The A-10 Warthog is a solid reminder that a fighter is built to fight until it can fight no more. Exactly. A reminder that a fighter could always keep up with the times if prioritized. And a reminder that you should subscribe to this channel. Wow, that, that was absolutely insane. You know, like, wow, man, wow. Let me know, guys, your thoughts in the comments below. I would truly want to hear them as well. And let me know what other reactions you guys would like. That would be, like, honestly amazing so let me know guys thank you for watching if you haven't liked this video already go ahead like subscribe and we'll see you in the next video peace out